Well, everybody, I'm back and I'm real excited. I know what you guys are saying, Constance. You're excited every week, right? You know, expectation and excitement is is a vibration in which you create. And so uh, we got a powerful man in the house today. Let me introduce him properly. Uh, Rodney C. Burroughs is one of America's top leaders in unlocking human potential and inspiring organizations to greatness. He is an expert, everybody. You know what an expert is, right? Uh, in uh, emotional intelligence, and he's going to tell us how we can use that in our manifestation. He's an international speaker. He's a youth advocate, professional development coach, a published author, and he loves to inspire people to discover and reach their fullest potential. That's what it's all about. So we are grateful to, to God and excited. So Rodney C. Burroughs, work, welcome to the Thank Law of Attraction Radio you. Network. It feels good to be here, Constance. How are you? I'm amazing. Thank you. How are you doing? Man, it is a sunny day here in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, for it to be June, go, well, July, July. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the weather's been kind of, it's been feeling like fall, sometimes a little bit of winter. So we finally are getting into a stretch of some warm days. So it's feeling good. Spirits are being lifted up. And I'm, I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Right. We're going to help people all over the world today. Yeah. So Rodney, quickly tell people just a little bit about you. You have an amazing story. Uh, yes, so for yes, anybody yes. who's going through something, all my international listeners, all my folk in Africa, y'all listen. Uh, yes. And then he's going to teach us about emotional intelligence. So your childhood was had some interesting well, stuff going on. Go ahead and tell us turn. about that. So I was born in Baltimore um, and I spent a good bit of my childhood in Baltimore. And due to domestic violence and, mm. you know, kind of drugs being in and out of our situation, my mother made one of the smartest, but probably one of the most difficult decisions that a parent could make. She took me and my little sisters out of that situation mm. almost overnight, Constance. And so she literally woke up one morning, um, got me dressed for school. I'm the oldest. I'm, I'm the only boy. I got two younger sisters. Mm -hmm. She got us dressed for, got me dressed for school, got them dressed for daycare. We got in a car. But instead of making the turn that we were supposed to make to go towards my school to drop me off, she kept going. Wow. And in my mind, I started thinking like, what? Like, I'm seven years old at the time. And I knew not to ask, but I knew something was up. Like, I knew this wasn't the time to be, hey, mommy, where were you going? You missed the turn, right? I knew enough that that wasn't the proper time for that. But I also was like, okay. We ended up, we made one stop. Seems she had a support network. So shout out to people that are in our circle mm -hmm. to help us do those things that's challenging for us to do. And the next thing you know, Constance, she got on the road. She got on 95 highway here and uh, she just drove until she felt safe. Mm. And we ended up in Jacksonville, Florida from Baltimore, Maryland. And, and the crazy thing about it is she didn't stop in Jacksonville because that was her destination. She literally drove until she felt safe. Mm. And she, I remember, Constance, she told me so many times, she said that when she uh, got out of the car to pump the gas, it was even in time and it was warm outside. And just back in Baltimore, you know, we drove, we made a stop in South Carolina and then we stayed overnight at some little motel, side of the road, somebody, something. Um, and then we drove again, you know, and so the next day or so, it felt like two days to me. Again, I was a kid, so I really don't know. Felt like two days. But when we got to Florida, all she could think was it was just snowy. It was just rainy. It was just dismal where I came from. Here it felt alive and she felt safe. And that's how we got to Jacksonville, Florida, of all places, right? Wow. And we're going to talk about how how that changed your mindset and because it had to had to really shift and change you. And I'm glad you shared that because I know I got some ladies out there right now. Yeah. I coach some of them uh, and uh, you might be in a really unsafe place, domestic violence, and uh, there's a way out. 
and yeah. uh, anybody right now who's in that situation, email me, Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com, and I can give you the helpline. I can't remember the number. It's 889 or it's 988. I'll think of it in a minute. But let's get on and, and talk about your journey out of that. Yes. Um, you, I, I, I told him I've been stalking him on uh, social media. So you said, I release myself from versions of myself I created to survive. Yes, OMG, what does that mean? Yes, and, and what would that mean to somebody right now who feel like, I'm just, I know life is better. I should have, be, and do more. What does that mean? It, uh, that idea, Constance, came to me. I was in the airport. I was going through the security check-in. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was going through my backpack. I I was, I was I got stopped. I was one of those guys that got stopped that day. And he started throwing my stuff away, Constance. Right? Now, before they started throwing my stuff away, they were saying, well, sir, you can't have this. Or, sir, you can't have that. Now, I had been flying at that point a long time, right? This mm-hmm. wasn't early 2001 where life was different. And I've been traveling professionally since 2005 doing what I do. I'm not a new, I'm not a newbie, right? Mm-hmm. And so they're like, sir, you can't have this. And I'm like, I done flown a hundred times with these exact items. What do you mean? And I tried to state my case and they just was shut down. And he was like, you can't have this. And he started throwing it away. And I was so hurt and I was so offended. And I know you can't do nothing about it in those situations. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, Constance, I thought about the stuff that I carried in life the baggage, the coping mechanisms, the attitude, the bravado, the toughness, the the class clown, being very smart, being very funny, being overly responsible in these certain areas of my life. All of those things I collected, they were me, they were mine. And how can you, whoever you are, tell me that I can't have my stuff no more? I earned this stuff. Uh And if I didn't have these things, I wouldn't be here right now. And that's absolutely true. But if you're going to keep them past this point right here, oh, it might be a price that some of us may or may not be willing to pay, right? So let's take it out of the security checkpoint. Let's take it to the the check-in, right? Different part of the airport. You just walk in the door. Some of that stuff, they'll let you keep. But those fees, Constance. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I I see that as God really saying to you, you tell me or spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Rodney, from where I'm taking you, I'm talking to listeners too, for where you're going in life, you can't carry the same people, the same Mm -hmm. mindset, or the same attitude. That's right. We got to let some of that stuff go. Erica Badu came out with that song, and I think it was almost prophetic, right? Okay, what was it? Tell our listeners. Bag, bag Lady. So Erica okay. Badu, the singer, mm-hmm. our, beat, our, our artist, uh, she came out with that song, Constance, called Bag Lady. And part of that, part of the words in that song says, Bag Lady, you're going to miss your bus. You can't hurry up because you got too much stuff. Wow, that is so profound. And for anyone who is listening, I feel the spirit moving now, Rodney. For anyone who is listening, you know, the excess baggage of unforgiveness, what somebody did to you, attitude, who left you, what your employer did. I mean, in order to get to a new vibration for manifestation, you got to let that go. Yeah, I had a friend of mine, good buddy of mine. He told mm-hmm. me something about forgiveness. He told me accidentally, and uh, if I can just be regular, I wanted to fight him, Constance, because mm-hmm. he told me you can be myself. regular. <laughs> he told me about myself, and I ain't like it. I it was somebody in my family, and of course, a family member you know all your life, most mm-hmm, of your life. Right? Mm-hmm. So, this particular family member and I, at this point, have been having like a back and forth about a difficult topic for about 10 years, right? And um, I was complaining to my homie, like, man, they always been like this. And 
And so I was complaining and then I switched the conversation. It was like, but I can't really check them too much about it because they're, they're weak, they're, they're soft, they're fragile. And so they're hurting me and I got to kind of let this go, right? And I'm just all up in my feels. And he said, homie, either one or two things. He was like, either they are not as weak and as fragile as you want to make them out to be because you keep giving me, they did this intentionally in this example and this example. So either it's more strategic about how they're really moving or if they are who you think they are and you keep getting stepped on by them, then bro, maybe you a little bit weaker than the person that you think is weak yourself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that because that's a hard truth. So either I accept that I've been covering for them and ignoring the fact that they are moving with intention in some regards, or I, you know, that old saying, you can't, nobody can use you as a doormat if you're not laying down. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Nobody can be on your back if, if, unless you stand up, they can't still be on your back. Right. And so I had to do some self-evaluation in a moment. I just wanted to tussle with this boy. Right. Yeah. Showing me a mirror about myself. But this is what it led me to about forgiveness. So we share all the time about how forgiveness is about us and it's not really about them. And, you know, when we forgive them, we release ourselves. And I think that's true. And I also think that there's maybe like a step or two constants right before that. There's a part of us, you think about the little kid that we used to see on TV. His parents going through a divorce, right? Mm -hmm. And little Johnny, after school special on TV, little Johnny's sitting by, kicking the apple, kind of mad. And it's like, what's wrong, Johnny? And Johnny says, I think it's my fault that mom and dad are splitting. Absolutely. That's not true for little Johnny. And that's not true for just kids going through a divorce. That's true for humans. No matter what happens to us, fire, car accident, Getting, met, getting released from a job, bad relationship. There's a part of the little boy, little girl, the child in us that thinks that's our fault, whether it's rational, whether it's logical, it's our truth in here. And if most of the time, Constance, we don't give each other permission to acknowledge that truism because it's not logical. Johnny, you know that's not your fault. Keep it moving. But now Johnny got to go through 30 years of never being validated that he dealing with this. He taken into his relationships. He taken into his job, and so I had to. One, I was grateful because, like you said, God was tapping on my shoulder. I felt like this was another one mm -hmm. of those constants where God was like, "You think you need to forgive them for being them, but it's a part of you that's angry with your goddamn self, boy. Yeah, because you allowed this for ten years." Yeah. We were pissed off about that. That was a very powerful moment that I learned from one of my friends. And I don't even know if he meant to show that to me. We still yeah. might talk about this. If you hear about <laughs> it on the news. If I hear about it on the news, I'm like, I know that guy. Well, you know, and, and, and we're going to move on. But I tell you that I always say, when you don't deal with your stuff, your stuff deals with you. All Any unresolved stuff from childhood, all mm -hmm. of that shows up subconsciously in your beliefs. So teach us about emotional intelligence. That sounds <laughs> like such a... A, a a lofty education and we're break it down for listeners. Yes, absolutely. What is emotional intelligence? Gotcha. So emotional intelligence, we all know about this thing called IQ, right? IQ is how smart you are. Mm -hmm. Well, there's two systems in the brain. I mean, in the body that if we don't have them, we're not operating on this earth, right? The uh, famous American poet and author, Tupac Shakur was in a situation in his life and he damaged one of his lungs, right? Well, he was still making music. He's still going around from Cali to East Coast, West Coast, because we got two lungs and damaging a part of one lung doesn't shut down the whole show. But if you mess that brain up, you're done. That's IQ, right? Or if you mess up that heart, you're done. That's EQ, what's known as emotional 
intelligence quotient. So intellectual intelligence quotient, IQ, or emotional intelligence, EQ, right? And what our society kind of in, at large has really glorified is, I'm gonna use this word again, divorcing ourselves from the emotional aspects of being human, right? What that does unintentionally though, Constance, is that it keeps us from being functionally human. So you, you think about a car, if you take out any component of the car, the steering wheel, the AC systems, the wiper blades, you have a less than optimally functioning vehicle right? Because how the creator designed this vehicle to work, it needs all those systems to kind of work together. We need to feel and we need to think. And those two things coming together gives us our best selves. We're able to show up in our best ways. So that's what emotional intelligence is. The active practice of tapping into that and realizing I have thoughts and I have feelings. Are you teaching now? You teaching now? Go ahead. So, so I have thoughts and feelings. We have thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. I learned this from uh, a mentor of mine. Shout out to Al Laws in Baltimore. Um, He owns a pretty big therapeutic uh, foster care agency, Mm -hmm. and uh, he has something that he calls the model. Within the the model is how people should could interact for the best outcomes, best results. Right. Well. In his model, Constance, he teaches sitting down and being patient enough to understand, do I feel this or am I thinking this? Wow. I'll, give you an example. I'll give you an example. So I'm mad. Let's say me and you're in a relationship, right? Me, mm-hmm. me and Constance, y'all, we've been dating 13 <laughs> years, right? We've been dating. We've been, so we're in a relationship and one day I'm just but out beside myself. I'm upset. Somebody comes to me constantly and they say, what you mad about? Well, I'm mad because, you know, me and Constance, she didn't show up when I needed her to. Well, Rodney, how does that make you feel? Well, I feel like Constance shouldn't be so trifling. Well, wait, 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 wait. wait. Those are thoughts, Rodney. You Mm. can't feel like she shouldn't be trifling. Feelings are excited, happy, sad, disappointed, neglected, ignored exuberant those are feelings despair sorrow you can't feel like somebody should have that's a thought it's a thought we merge them in our lingo well i just feel as though the president those are thoughts and so sitting down with ourselves constant and being patient enough to say what do i think and how do i feel and what meaning am i going to give to my feelings because we can't help how we feel Right. If you hang up this phone on me right now, I could I could feel like I can, I could feel let down. I could feel shocked. My thoughts don't have to go to see. That's why I can't stay. And every time I turn around, me and constant, those are thoughts that I'm allowing. We don't teach each other that since we five and six years old with Snaggle mm-hmm. Teeth. If we did, by the time a person's sixteen, constant, they got a decade, a decade of practicing. Is that my thoughts? So those are my feelings. Distinguishing that is called emotional intelligence. Wow. Profoundly shared. And, and um, you know, just with the law of attraction, one of the main aspects of that is decide what you want. You know this. And yeah. then feel... As you better if you already have it and deserve it because our feelings attract. That's right. Do you do we know? Do you know why? Can I can I put it in little Rodney terms? Uh-huh. I use little words, right? Because my little simple self, right? So I gotta use little words, right? Go ahead, Rodney. So God is not this place to be a mirror. This world, this universe, life, relationships, people, they reflect to us who we are, right? So let's think about an actual mirror for a second, Constance, right? An actual mirror doesn't show us what we looked like yesterday. And an actual mirror doesn't show us how we think we want to look for this engagement coming up in two weeks. Mm-hmm. When we get this outfit, this dress, this, and get our hair done, blah, blah, blah. The mirror shows us 
who we actually are, right? And so in order for life, people, whomever, to give us what we believe we want, we have to be it. We have to know it. We have to operate in it. So, because life is only going to reflect to us that which we are, not that which we want to be. And guess what else? The life doesn't reflect to us our past unless we're still living there. Unless those are the feelings we're recycling and requiring to be our current reality. Then life is going to be like, okay, there you go. Say no more. Hit wow. this is who you want to be. And so really just kind of, I want to be different and better. I want them to treat me better. I want a different response from my child, my teenager. I'm tired of my boo thing being a certain kind of way. This is why, if I can use scripture for an example, this is why. Please do. This is why the scripture says, I'm going to paraphrase it, right? Because I told you I use little words. Right? Mm -hmm. So we can finally paraphrase. Looking at somebody and being like, ooh, you got, a, you got something in your eye. You got something in your eye. Meanwhile, we got something in our own eye and we don't even know if that's coloring what we think we see. Yeah. And so the Bible says, take a moment, right? Take care of yourself because as we do that, it requires life to conform and respond and reflect back to us who we naturally are. That's the process. Wow, I love that. And you know, I love it being the therapist that I am, yes. that your friend said to take the time to sit and 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 get in touch with your feelings, especially guys. Okay, guys, I got a lot of love you guys. But um, I remember once I was doing a group, uh, Rodney, and I was asking the men, and, and I guess the guy was about 30 or 40, 10 men. Uh -huh. And they were just weeping. I said, so what do you feel? And they didn't know what they felt because they said, we've been taught all of our lives not to feel not to and to be strong. So to males who are listening, or if you are a female and your husband or your partner or your brother, what would you say to men about emotional intelligence and getting in touch with their feelings? It's about it's about being strong, to be honest with you, on a straight up guy. This is tapping into your real strength. So one of the things that we have done, and I say this again, society at large, right? Like right. Rear each other is the idea that the term emotion and weakness are the same thing. That so emotional true. and teary are the mm -hmm. same. You feeling emotional. You feel it I was in South Africa. It's the first time I got to go to the continent. It blew my mind and it changed my life. I was there for about 10 days. Um, I was there with people that I met here in the States that actually were, were from South Africa. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting on couches and I'm meeting grandmas and aunties and I'm eating food and I'm in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, first of all, Constance. Johannesburg, South Africa is one of the biggest, most bustling metropolises, modern day cities I've ever seen. Skyscrapers everywhere, billboards, highways sneaking through downtown, big malls, everybody black. It was amazing. I didn't know that Africa looked like that. And I just went in 2017. It blew my mind, right? From the moment I touched down and started experiencing that over the course of 10 days, I was on an emotional high. I had every feeling. I was in shock for days. I don't even know if that's healthy. Because, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. in a state of I've shock. I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Right? I was excited. I was, I was shown new things. I was surprised. I was wild. I was humbled. I was grateful. I felt all of these emotions for like 10 days. I came back a changed person in 2017 right being emotional is being able to experience it's not about being weak right it actually allows us to tap into a different synergy of self so we say the brain people the going thing years ago constance you remember was we only use 10 percent of our brain mm -hmm. right that's what everybody said i don't know how true that is but that's what everybody that's what we tell each other mm -hmm. The emotional center in the brain 
It's called the amygdala. It's in the limbic portion, right? The thinking portion where we teach guys to operate from, nah, bro, cut that out and think about it. That's in the frontal cortex, that's the, cor cortex. That's the cerebral portion. Those two areas don't naturally connect, right? So this is why when we have a feeling, we don't have words for it. Somebody scares, ah, it's not a word. We, we, we see something that we don't like, ah, it's not a word, right? It's the same type of vocalization. Those aren't words, and it's true across Japan, France, Indonesia. Oh, well, ah, it's the same kind of word, right? Because there's no logic and thinking, processing, arithmetic in the amygdala, in the emotional center. We have to teach ourselves to connect the two to use our words, to find what you mean. Are you feeling or are you thinking? And where's the convergence between those? If we do that as men, we operate in a different dominance. And wow. That's we got to engage guys about that idea. That's powerful. So let me take you back to the law of attraction because we know yes. you get clear about what you want. You yes. write it down. You visualize yeah. it with feeling and emotion. That's right. That's right. You right. see and feel yourself already having it. Yes, so emotions are very powerful even in manifestation. Have to be. You, we got to feel it because so there's there's something called dissonance, right? Okay. It's a big word that simply means I'm trying to think two different things at the same time. Mm -hmm. Can't I can't go left and right at the same time. And so in order for us to really manifest, in order for us to really create, we got to think and feel. Think and feel. So this is what happens. If I think, if I if I just say, I want a million dollars. I want a million dollars. I want a million dollars. Mm -hmm. But my feeling is undeserving. I feel undeserving of a million dollars. Or or, or let's say I really feel it. Like I really, really, really want it. I really want it. But the thought, the belief in the back of my mind is that people with a lot of money do crooked things. The Bible says... I'm not going to put more on you than you're able to bear. Mm -hmm. You think you finna turn evil with all this money. Why would I do that? To you? you don't really want that. You have dissonance. You have dissonance. So if you're, if you're, if you, I'm a paraphrase that I use little words, right? Okay. If you got two wise and you letting light in, right? If, if, if you got, if, if you're looking this way and looking that way, a double-minded man is unstable <laughs> in all of this, right? Mm -hmm. However, if your eye be single, if you're on one accord, if you have what's called the opposite of dissonance is coherence. I was so, just going to ask you that question. You read my mind. Now we're in the spirit. Okay. We're, we're, so coherence. That one is <laughs> that oneness constant. So coherence means there's a, there's a sync. There's a uh, synchronicity between what I'm thinking and what I believe, what I feel. And in that space, in that space, I was talking to a young lady on the phone. This was years ago. She had a baby. And uh, mm -hmm. in addition to telling me that I needed a girlfriend, right? She was like, Chris, you need a girlfriend. My middle name is Chris. She's like, Chris, you need a girlfriend. In the middle, in the, in the middle of her saying that, she was talking to me she was holding the baby and she was washing the tub. Now, I just told you three things that require a hand, Constance. I don't know how many hands people got with you from. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm talking to them. I'm like, how are you doing this? And mm -hmm. this is what she said to me. This is about coherence. She said, well, Chris, you already know that you're not going to drop the baby. Everything else falls in line. Wow. That, 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 that's powerful. So you just, you are teaching people why stuff has not manifested because they think it in their head, I want abundance, I want wealth, I want love, I want, but in their heart. In my heart, it's far from that. It's far from that. So guess what that happens? Depart from me. You can't have this. You can't enter into this kingdom of abundance because you're over here. You split. And being in 
Uh, but can I tell you something else? This oh, yeah, said? go ahead. So the Bible don't just say, um, I don't put more in you than you're able to bear. The Bible also says, I give you the desires of your heart. Let me make it personal. I learned for a long time that to really demonstrate, or you could really know the mark of somebody that's walking in their faith with God because of their struggles and how God brings them through. Because of the struggles and how God brings them through. You know what that means for me, Constant? That means in order for me to really have this great life and testimony of having this relationship with God, I got to have what? got to have struggles. So what am I doing? I'm looking for it, Constance. I'm out here scared. Not, but I don't realize this, right? Because if you ask me, I'd be like, no, not like anybody else. Mm -hmm. But what do I believe as a man thinks in his heart internally? What, what's really in coherence, what you think in your heart, that's about coherence, right? So what, what's really going on inside of me is that I'm scanning for trouble. I do this workshop when I'm in, especially when I'm in person, sometimes it works virtually, right? Mm -hmm. So th this is this is what I have people do. I have them, everybody raise their left hand, right? People don't know they left sometimes. I make a joke about that. I have them wiggle their little fingers and I put your left hand over your eyes, right? So people cover up their eyes and I say, okay, I'm gonna give you about eight seconds. I want you to name everything in this room that's orange. And people like, oh, are you see, no peeking. Right. And then, okay, okay. And I just do a countdown and folks can't think it. I say, so how many people thought of one thing as orange? And you see a few hands go up. Who thought of two things, three things? And so we go up and up and up. It barely gets to a very high number, right? Because in, in here, orange. And then we open our eyes and we look around and it's like, oh, wait, that's orange. Oh, snap, that's orange. Oh, snap, those shoes orange. We saw it the whole time, right? Wiggle the fingers again, guys. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Left hand back up. Cover it back up. Okay, now name everything in here. They ready for this orange now, right? Mm -hmm. That's green. What? Ain't nothing in here green. Right? <laughs> he tripping, right? I get the little countdown, open the eyes. Who thought of anything? I ain't think about nothing. Huh? Then the green, like little lights. Green, green, green. Ain't nobody, y'all, come in here real quick and swap out colors. It's been here. But we wasn't looking for it, so it wasn't there. Success, opportunity, better relationship, better health is it's right here. And like green lights, once we change and hit this coherence up, start looking for it, it flashed. Here I am. Here's a door. Here's a Constance Arnold Rodney that you can meet. Green <laughs> Oh, that's powerful, Rodney. So, so, so let's help some folk yes, some more. So people who you've heard, you don't attract what you want, you attract who you are. And so, and you've also heard the whole quantum physics, quantum physics that whatever you focus in on will download into your life and will manifest. So, so, so break that down in the area of emotional intelligence, because you attract who you are from your yes. being. Is that how yes. that goes? In, mm -hmm. it, so, so, and this is why, Constance. Um, so, I literally just did this, and and at the expense of not, you know, telling nobody else's business because this wasn't just connected to me. So I'm gonna <laughs> spare some true stories for a moment, Constance. But I had. I, my therapist told me this, and I'm very proud to talk about be, me being in therapy because I rejected it for years. Oh, well, pr I, I'm proud of you. Yes, and guess what? It shows. Yeah. I can feel, oh, yeah. After I've been a therapist for 30 years, I can see it in you. I can hear it in you. I can feel your vibration. So whoever it is, tell them they're doing a great they, I know doing you're doing the in, inner work. Okay. No, no, no. They listen, listen. They working with my little self my messed up foolishness. <laughs> this is what he told me Constance I was in there complaining I, I you know what I, I like to envision myself as this person that just always talking about good and the positive the truth mm -hmm. of the matter is I'm a regular degular mm -hmm. my blood is red my my sister saw a video that I had on uh Instagram the other day and she called me and she was like bro I just want to tell you, you look like your feet stink how the video Constance of my face Look like my feet. 
that's why sisters ain't good for nothing. You can't <laughs> keep them around. You got to let them go. You got to let your sisters go, y'all. Every brother out there, they got to let them go. They not good for us. Nah, but um, anyway, I, I'm a regular guy. And so I, I appreciate therapy and counseling sessions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? And I get to not put on the... It, sometimes you don't want to do the work of like, okay, let me be present. And these are my thoughts. And these are my feelings. And how do I embody it? Sometimes you just want to put those bags down, put that weight down, right? And just be. A therapeutic session is a wonderful time. It's a wonderful outlet for that, right? So I was in there talking and just being me, just being regular. And he said, hold on, Rodney. He said, I want you to start teaching yourself, training yourself. He said that every time you use the words always, never, every time, those type of words, mm-hmm. right? He said, every time you hear yourself saying that, he said, start training yourself to let that be an indicator to self that your thing is a little bit skewed mm-hmm. because it's nothing that's always and ever and ever. So if that's your truth. Every time, it's always been like this. It's not, if, that's, if that's what you feel is your truth in a moment, Start training yourself to hear that and be like, mm, my thinking is a little bit off. My thinking is mm. So this is the deal. I, I bring that up to say, from there, he's, I've learned many tools, right, to start applying and doing the inner work, like you said, Constance, with your experienced self. And one of the things that he helped me also see was training myself that when my people Get on my god darn nerves. My last ever loving nerve. Mm-hmm. Let that be an indicator that it's something about it, myself that I'm seeing in them. And it may not be in the same category. And see, that's where we give ourselves the the, the blank check, the write-off, to be like, no, nah, that's them. They crazy. They wrong. They trifling. They immature. That's the blank check that we give, our, give ourselves. But that trait is sh- we only see it because they're a mirror. That's the only reason why we can see it. Good. And we are seeing it with them because it's time for us. God is tapping us on our shoulder. Guess what it's time for you to work on, my boy? Guess what it's time for you to pay attention to? But we get stuck because we mm-hmm. haven't had good consciences in our life, right? We haven't had good trainers. and We've had great people, but we haven't had a whole bunch of fo- folks train us to view life as indicators of self. Oh, I love that. I love, and that's what all of, all of my listeners know. Even though I've been a therapist for thirty years, mm-hmm. I still go to counseling once Absolutely. a month with my mentor. I still get coaching once a month from my other mentor. So, so this might be my last question to you, uh, yeah. uh, Rodney. So, do you believe that when there's coherence? you know, mm-hmm. with the thinking and, yes. you know, y'all know I'm a Christian. So, you know, yeah. I believe in God and spirituality and all of that. When, when you are in touch with your emotions and the thinking and, and people get clear about what they want and they are aligned, can we literally manifest what we want? Constance, here's the truth. <laughs> What's the truth? We don't never not manifest. Yeah. We Listen, 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 listen. If I didn't know I was breathing oxygen, if I didn't realize it, but I'm alive and moving and running around here. So if I never went to school and somebody taught me about a molecule, does that nullify the existence of what's going on? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. If I never learned theoretical physics and about the law of gravity, that don't mean that if I jump off a building, the law doesn't take effect. Life and death don't lie, lie, lie in the power of Christian tongues. It don't mm-hmm. lie in the, it is the, that power don't lie in the um, tongue of believers. I gave them dominion. This was from the beginning, Constance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what we think and what we feel actually, actually, Not the mantras that we tell ourselves, not the songs we listen to and shake the haters off that feel good for 20 seconds in the club or whatever it is. 
But when we really actually believe, and this is unfortunate, that I deserve a woman that treat me bad. I deserve a man to talk to me like that. I, I des when we really think that I ain't gonna keep this job for so long and I'm gonna have to, it's gonna shut down. When we honestly believe that good things happening are a sign that bad stuff is about to come, it has to. Our life is a current manifestation of our true coherence. We, it's the law, it's the law. How we can improve that, if I, so I love the fact that you said you're a Christian because it allows me to tap into my truth. All my, I can't go in a lot of universities and corporate settings and, and talk about Christianity, right? Jesus didn't just come, Constance, to save us. He came to deliver us from the curse of the law, the curse of the law, not just from the law, but the law ain't all them 150,000 things, right? Mm -hmm. The law is this requirement of who I am reflecting back to me. So then what covers us? Grace. You don't mean that, Rodney. You didn't mean to speak that. You didn't mean mm -hmm. to require bad mm -hmm. stuff to happen to you. So I got, I'm going to redeem you from the curse of this law. Practice be around your consciences of your life that can help you speak better, think better, see better. But until then, I got you. I'm a cover. I'm going to make amends. I'm going to be your advocate. It's the curse of the fact that our mouth, our thinking is creating and manifesting every single moment of every day. It cannot not be. That's Perfect. the law. The curse of the law is what we get delivered from. I tell you what, if I wasn't recording, I would get up and run around my house right now. But let's uh, do it. Wow. Let's go. <laughs> very, very powerful. And uh, I want people to, you guys know I've interviewed every 